Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Cooler Master UCP 1100 watt power supply. What's included is a user's manual, a CD with the user's manual on it, a power cable, screws for mounting the power supply in the case, and the power supply. The Cooler Master UCP line of power supplies are currently available in three wattages, 700, 900, and 1100. I'll be reviewing the 1100 watt model, which is more than enough power even for the most hardcore gaming computer systems. Now, how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 208 watts and the 12 volt is 1000 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail, well the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 5 volt rails are both 25 amps each, and there are 6 plus 12 volt rails, the first two are 20 amps each, and the others are 22 amps each. Note that this power supply uses a single plus 12 volt switching circuit design which is fantastic because a single plus 12 volt rail is preferred in a multiple video card setup. There are a few important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig will require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, get a power supply that's above 1000 watts with a single plus 12 volt rail. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. This power supply is rated above a very impressive 88% under typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. However, this power supply meets the 80 plus silver and NVIDIA SLI certifications. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. Many power supplies use low-grade capacitors which can lead to system instability, system failure, and other issues. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Usually, high wattage power supplies are long. Really, this one is no exception. However, I've seen many other power supplies in the same wattage range that are longer than this one. But even so, it might not fit in some mid-tower home theater PC and small form factor cases. It also comes with a very distinctive scratch resistant paint finish and the housing is steel. They include a load controlled quiet 120 millimeter fan. So the more load, the faster the fan spins, but even at max load, this fan is still quiet. There's also honeycomb ventilation over the fan as well as here. This ensures maximum cooling. So the power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cable connection, power switch, and the status LED. 
This power supply has plenty of long leads and they are all sleeved, which reduces the cable mess inside the case and will improve airflow. Unfortunately, this power supply doesn't have modular leads, rather all the leads are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. Modularity is usually preferred because only the leads that are required are connected, thus unused cables are not cluttering up the case. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. If you have a extreme gaming rig or if you're thinking about building an extreme gaming rig with a multiple video card setup and I'm not referring to a lower end multiple video card setup I'm referring to a higher end multiple video card setup for example the ATI or AMD 4870X2 video cards or the GTX 280 video cards from Nvidia if you have those in a multiple video card setup you need to have some serious power behind you and this power supply would be more than adequate for that task it performs very very well overall this is a 100 percent kick-ass product until next time take care